So in talking about customer experience strategy, I found it best to be thinking about customers' expectations versus the realities and what does it take to drive a one-to-one ratio. So this is what I call the customer experience management ROI model. And it was uh, something that I sketched out after doing those correlation analyses in my five-year study of global customer experience practices. So what I found was there was a tremendous amount of effort being done on customer voice and also retention and loyalty and business results. And essentially, we could park almost everything that's being done in customer experience management in those two buckets. And it really bothered me because I thought, well, why are we collecting this voice? Why are we bothering customers to take up their precious time and effort to collect this when we're not really doing anything with it? We're just patting ourselves on the back, uh, giving managers a safe pass because they're they're in the, the safe zone of performance. So business as usual. That's not what it's about. Uh, when I was voice of the customer manager, uh, I, w- I came in in the total quality management days where the whole idea was to manage your business smarter than your competitors. At that time, we were ha- facing a lot of competition from Japan in particular in producing better products, better services. You know, everything uh, was more efficient and, and economical with the Japanese products. And so we were really trying to figure out how to get into our customers' heads in order to accom- you know, adjust our products and quality and services and business models accordingly to outpace our competitors. Now with the net promoter score, I think all of that's kind of gone out the window uh, to a large degree, uh, measuring transactions like crazy. Um, So I think we need to be thinking about what the heck, why are we doing this? What is it really doing for the customer experience in the course of the customer experience management? Sometimes the whole, the whole management of customer experience is, is, uh, maybe not even helping the customer feel a better experience. So what I wanted to show is that customer voice is data that needs to be translated into intelligence, meaning you're looking for the patterns across a a set of data or multiple sets and sources of data. What are the patterns? What are some aha that really perks the, the attention of your managers? Customer intelligence is where we would need to be putting a lot more of our energy and not just relying on these automated uh, software. We need to be thinking a lot about what's important to our operations people, our engineering people, our manufacturing people, legal, safety, finance. How do we translate the customer voice into meaningful actions or meaningful insights that guide them as expectations VOC for their performance standards and continually raising the bar in the way that we produce the realities for customers. Because let's face it, the bar is continually increasing for their expectations unless we're continually raising the bar in the realities that we're we're delivering, we're going to always be behind the curve. So you can see what I'm calling here on the right-hand corner is experienced leadership, company-wide alignment to customer, employee, and partner expectations, because we rely on these groups, customers, employees, and partners to fuel our business. When their performance sags and everything sags, we really need their performance to be top notch. And so we need to be thinking about how do we close the gap between their aim and our aim. So we're both aiming at the same thing. And this is what I mean by managing to those expectations and closing the gap. So the next step is customer-focused strategy and customer centricity. You need to take this customer intelligence, customer lifetime value. Now the value actually prioritizes um, what to work on first, as well as um, right-sizing your effort and apply it to your corporate strategy, apply it to the way that people think and do. So anything that you have in your company that's shaping the way that people think, your training, your onboarding, your uh, inner, your incentives, your rewards, your, your reviews of all kinds, your per- permissions and approvals of all kinds, those shape people's thinking and doing. So be injecting, embedding the customer intelligence and lifetime value insights 
into all of those. And that's how you shape the culture and the strategy. Next is customer experience improvement and innovation, which includes human-centered design. So improvement means getting to the root cause of those issues that are prevail prevalent in the customer experience that are tied strongly to loyalty. So we do a correlation analysis, a Pareto analysis to identify the, the, the vital few. And we let go of these quick wins as the obsession. Uh, we need to let go of those quick wins as an obsession because they're derailing us from making the big gains associated with vital few in the, uh, the Pareto uh, tied to these key driver analysis. So if this is all Greek to you, send me a note. I'm always glad to, uh, to answer any details. And uh, I see you're here, Maher. Glad to, glad to see you here. Any questions you have, uh, please post them. Um, but customer experience improvement, I, I'm really dismayed that the CCXP blueprint has erased the word improvement. That's a travesty. We need to reinsert it, and we absolutely need to emphasize it for 2023 strategy. And then what this leads to is engaging your internal people commensurate with what you're expecting to engage externally or more because your internal people, bread and butter, you know, their, their livelihood, their, their salaries, their budgets, the dividends for investors are all dependent upon customers preferring your brand. And therefore, we need to be really bold and engaging people. But we need to be clever about it and make sure that the, the way that we're sharing the customer experience insights and driving the improvement and innovation actually fits into people's jobs that it fits into the existing meetings, reviews, recognition, rewards, improvement efforts, decision-making, handoffs, insert your customer experience stuff into what they're doing. And this is how you get that strong engagement. And we had over a hundred action plans going on simultane simultaneously during several years of boom growth. I mean, we had hockey stick growth happening and it was hard to keep people's attention on improving customer experience. And yet we made major strides. So in conclusion, I wanted to emphasize that to get there, there are six competencies for experienced leadership. First of all, establishing a customer lifetime value mindset across your company. Second, driving customer-centered action to address the prevalent issues. How well are we really getting to the root cause of the, the most pressing things, the, the things that are coming up month after month, year after year? Let's just get to the root of those and get them off the slate so people aren't calling in or churning because of those issues anymore because those issues don't exist. That's the point. This is how we create massive ROI in customer experience. It's how we create massive gains. It's how we did it. Uh, I mentioned having 100 plans at the same time. In that period, we were saving millions of hours and millions of dollars for our customers uh, because this is the, the, what I've been describing to you is exactly the way that we were managing customer experience. So it's possible. Use customer experience insights in all of your growth plans, the enterprise use of insights, re-engineering, creating new products and services, your, any strategies. Customer experience insights should be at the beginning as well as continued through, like human-centered design, for heaven's sakes, not as an afterthought or, you know, a nice to have. Customers are really, at, should be at the core of everything. So this means we need to have aligned motivations, we need to respect interdependencies, and we need to have consistency to intentions. Because if these things are screwed up internally, it's going to show up externally. So thank you so much for joining me today, and I uh, hope, hope you have a good weekend. Take care.